Hello, my name is Kate Ruiz. I'm one of the consultants um, at Leicester Wall Infirmary. I'm going to show you very quickly how to use our ICE system. ICE is the system that we use for requesting investigations such as lab tests and radiology. And um, we can also do um, discharge letters from here if the patient's been admitted um, to our short stay units. And we can also review results. Um, so basically you log on by using the application on Nerve Centre or you can search for ICE, which has got this little snowflake icon. Um, and you get into the programme very simply. And the first thing to make sure that you're aware of is that when you're searching for a specific patient, what I really strongly want to tell you is to not copy and paste from Nerve Centre. And the reason for that is because we've had some um, incidents where um, the copying pasting has gone wrong and images have been requested for the wrong patient. And sometimes patients had um, radiation when they didn't need it and that can cause some patient safety problems. So um, always put the um, S number in by hand. Um, obviously I'm not gonna do that because I uh, don't want to use patient identifiable information. So I'm gonna search for a test patient, which you can also do as well if you want to sort of um, test out the system. Let's go for Mr. Arthur Test down here. So you click on him. He brings him up. So double check um, at the top that you're happy that you've got the right patient, you've got the right name, date of birth and S number. Um, and then what you're really doing is looking down the side here to see um, what you want to do once you've brought that patient up. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky. You have to sort of change the size of the screen to get all the information that you want. Um, so let's go straight to requesting and we'll go to new request just there. So what we've got here is you've got um, all different tabs along the top here. Now I would advise you strongly to use this one, ED only, um, because when we work in the emergency department, we have access to slightly different testing protocols compared to the rest of the hospital. Um, and it's often slicker and more user friendly. So I would strongly advise you to use this one. If you want to request any investigations such as blood tests, the common ones that we have are here. Um, so these are all the common ED tests, so you can look at all of these. Um, blood gases should be requested for blood cultures there as well. Um, another one that is quite useful that's also only, only relevant to ED is path order sets. So if you go to path order sets, these are sets of um, investigations that have been set up already. Now, most of the patients you'll probably find will have had their blood test done by the time you see them. But for example, if your patient had abdominal pain and you wanted to do typical abdominal pain bloods, they would come up here. So you can put select all and it makes life more easy for you. And once you've selected all the blood tests, you go to the green button, continue with request. And put in that you're at the LRIED, which is here. And then put in your clinical details, such as uh, right upper quadrant, back upper pain, uh, fever, cystitis. Is there a danger of infection? So does your patient, for example, have a, a blood-borne virus or other um, infection that you might be concerned we need to notify the lab staff about? I'm going to say no in this case. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can go to accept request there. And then after a moment, once it's had a chance to think about it, it will say that it's been sent to printing. And then if you use your um, tap on tap off card, you can go up to a printer and tap it on and your blood test should automatically be printed out. So that's all quite straightforward. Let's go and request some imaging. Um, we'll stick with this same patient, we'll stick with Arthur. Okay, so when you go to imaging, once again, go back to the ED only tab. This is really important. Lots of different imaging available. So we've got x-rays at the top there, trunk, upper limb, lower limb. We've got CTs. I'm going to click on CT. Once again, important to go to the ED only page because we have different protocols and it will be easier for you to request imaging on this tab. Couple of things you need to be aware of. This first one is these CT scans here, head injury, stroke, and there's usually a, um, there may be a renal colic one. Um, 
are approved under protocol. So that means that um, the radiographers, not the radiologists, can vet the request. So normally what happens if you request any of these tests here is it goes to the radiology uh, registrar or whoever's on for emergency radiology. They'll look at the request and decide whether it's something that you they, they think is a reasonable request and vet it before sending it to the radiographers who then organise who's being CT skipped first. So if, for example, um, they, your patient has got a CT, um, a head injury that requires a CT scan according, according to NICE guidelines, if you click on this, you can put in which NICE guideline they follow. Commonly, it would be something like that. So you can put on, on the Pixaban. And this means that when you request this, the patient, this, re this request won't go to the radiologist. It will go straight to the radiographers and they can do the test under, under protocol. So it's faster to get the test done in these situations. So if your patient does have a, a head injury that meets NICE guidelines or they've got stroke according to our uh, UHL guidelines, then you can request under this protocol. Okay, and you do the same thing, you continue with the request and put in your clinical details. Um, so what sort of things uh, do we need to put in our clinical details? I'm going to request an x-ray for a hip. So let's imagine that your patient has come in and they are an older person who has fallen. And on examination, they have a, a shortened and externally rotated hip. Um, what we need to do is we need to make sure we're putting the right information in there for the radiologists. So that would be, it's really important to put in the presenting complaint. So put full externally shortened and externally rotated hip. And then what's also important is that you put in any relevant past medical history. So that could be things, for example, such as in general, things to think about would be things like, has the patient got a previous history of VTE? Has the patient got a previous history of immunosuppression? Have they had previous surgery? And do they have um, a history of cancer? So, for example, in this patient, um, the radiologist will want to know, has this patient got metal work in their hip? Have they previously had any surgery done on their hip? And also, has this patient got a history of cancer? Because if the patient's got a history of cancer, they will do a full length femur x-ray to look for possible cancer deposits rather than just a hip x-ray. OK, so it's really important that you put relevant past medical history in there so that the rates so that we're helping our radiology colleagues and that we're not making patients go back and forward to x-ray which isn't really patient centered um, so i'm going to put um that they've um they previous metal work cancer history which shows i've thought about it query neck of femur fracture and that hash for anyone that's not worked in a &E or orthopedics before that's the sign for a query fracture um, so you do that there and then you request accept the test okay and you don't need to print it out in the, in this sort of uh, if it's an imaging request okay you can just close those boxes a couple of other things for you to just know about we're going to stay on mr arthur test so we've talked about um bloods we've talked about imaging there's something else that you can request and that's services so if you go to this tab here called ed service referrals there's different services that you can refer to directly such as fracture clinic now when you request for fracture clinic it's really important that you do print out the fracture clinic request and put it in the notes okay and um, because they're not quite moved over to um a fully paperless system yet so that's really important if you don't print out the request and put it in the notes the patient may get lost in the system you can also tap into this tab here, which is general service referrals, and you'll definitely need to use some of these at some point. I'm not going to go through them all, and many of them we don't actually have access to in the emergency department. So it's really important that you're talking to your team leader to see what we can refer to, and what we can't. But a couple of things that are important. You will certainly at some point have to do safeguarding referrals for adults and children. So they're there. It's always important you put as much information as you can in, into those um, referrals. A um, couple of other things, trial without catheter. That's one that we quite commonly use for patients that come in with urinary retention and then we catheterise them and they're fit for discharge. But we want to make sure that they've got appropriate follow-up. Um, and you've got things such as 
palliative care. We do actually refer quite a lot to palliative care and different MDT services as well. So you can, for example, refer directly to a lung cancer MDT if your patient's got an incidental finding of a suspected tumour on their imaging when you image them for another reason. Um, and somewhere, here we go, MDT refers, there's lots of ability to refer to different MDTs. So have a look at it, um, make sure that you're familiar with the different types of services that you can refer to um, using ICE. And the last thing that you will need to know about is that ICE also shows you results. So you can go down here, view patient reports, and you should see all the uh, blood results that the patients had under their name and also imaging results. But these days you can actually access straight directly from nerve centre, which might be easier for you. Finally, there's a discharge tab here. So for anybody working on our short stay units, such as EDU or CSSU, and you need to discharge a patient from there, you'll need to do a formal discharge letter on ICE. Um, and that's basically done by you finding out uh, sort of the admission date. So if we pretended that we were working for orthopaedics at the moment and trying to do a discharge letter for this um, episode here, you'd put create letter and then it would um, allow you to pick whichever letter that was most appropriate um, <clears throat> for your inpatient admission and do the discharge letter by that. I'm not going to show everybody how to do it because many of you won't be working on our short stay wards. Um, but for those that do work on EDU and CSSU, um, it's relatively straightforward and we, we can teach you that on the shop floor. OK, so that's just to sum it up. That's ICE. It's very user friendly, very straightforward. Um, I don't think you'll have any problems with it. Let's leave it there.